Hi, welcome once again to Fun and Fast Painting. I'm your host, Wilson Bickford, and I'm going to show you some easy oil painting techniques that will allow you to be the artist. Um, I have in mind today a nice little waterfall, one of nature's most fantastic creations. I promised you that last week in the series. Remember I said we were going to do a waterfall. Here it is. We're doing something a little different today as far as the prep work. I used some of my black gesso. Remember on the rosebud, if you've been following the series, I used the black gesso. Uh, I only did part of the canvas this on this particular project. I left the top white. These have both been primed with oil medium. I'm going to explain this. Now, in your kit, if you get the kit, you could use this brush. I highly recommend, it would work, you need to clean it out with soap and water because this is acrylic primer. I would recommend getting just a cheap, inexpensive foam brush you could pick up at a hardware store, 69 cents, using this to prime it. This has two coats of black acrylic on here. Over that, I have put some of my clear glazing medium. I poured some on my palette. I went in and covered all of the black area with clear medium. After that, I took some of my fast flow white, poured a little bit on the palette, dipped in, and I have subsequently painted it in the top. So the whole canvas is wet. There's clear down here, white up here. The black will not budge. It is acrylic. It is dry underneath, so we can paint over the top of that without it lifting and muddying our color. That's the beauty of that. This is fast and fun, and waterfalls are one of the easiest things to do. They're very popular project in my classes. So let me run through the list of materials here. I'm using my number two or my two inch scenery brush, my one inch scenery brush, my number three fan brush, my small painting knife, and my number two script liner. Very few colors, very few tools. As far as the colors go, I'm using cadmium red deep, ultramarine blue, sap green, Van Dyke Brown, Titanium White. I've got some of the fast low white medium left over for thinning my paint as well as some of the clear I can use for thinning the paint. I also have my paint thinner over here for thinning down even further if I need to thin the paint further. And I have some non-flammable, non-toxic brush cleaner here. So without further ado, let's get on to this. I'm seeing maybe some lower horizon colorful sky like maybe dusk or dawn. Anybody that looks at this is going to think it's one or the other, and that's it's kind of ambiguous. That's the nice part of it. I'm going to take a little bit of this cadmium red deep into the white brush that I had left over from putting, putting the white base medium on. Just going to work in a little dusting of that color. I want it kind of pastel and not too bold. Now what I'm going to do is kind of seesaw in between these trees. Now I put those on there. I wasn't actually painting trees. I was just kind of serrating the edge so when I bring trees into it, it kind of hides it. If I just paint a black line across there with my foam brush, it tends to show through the trees when you're all said and done. So by leaving a serrated edge there, you will see that the trees kind of melt in. So I'm just kind of working this down into there. You can't help but cover some of the black, so don't worry about that. And then I'm going to kind of go across this way. You'll see momentarily how that's going to correct itself. I'm just going to paint across like that. From the top side down, I'm going to incorporate some blue. I'm not even going to wash the brush. I'm going to take ultramarine blue into this brush. The worst that could happen, it, was a, it will go slightly purplish because I'm mixing blue into red. It doesn't bother me if it does. See, I can primarily keep it blue anyway if you use enough blue. It will override the red. But see, it does have a slight lavenderish tone there, which is nice for a sky. It kind of ties in with being dusk or dawn. It's not midday. You have the nice bright blue sky at midday. Now see everybody that looks at this, some people are going to think it's nighttime, some will think it's morning. It's all good. And see I'm just going to blend those two together. I'm using kind of a crisscross stroke where I want those colors to melt into each other. Lighter touch. I can get those to hold hands as I like to say. All right, very simple sky in this one. We don't have to have a lot of fanfare in it. Sometimes less is more. I'm gonna start figuring out my composition on my canvas at this point. I'm gonna have a little pool of water back here somewhere and then coming down into some falls. I need to find where that level is going to be in the back. So I'm gonna take my fan brush, 
I'll just take some of this sky blue color I just had. Just a speck of white. I don't want it real dark. I don't want it real light. I want it just kind of enough to show up. It's just a reference mark at this point. I just need to stake out my turf. Now I'll put that a little bolder than I actually want it just so it translates to camera and you can see it. You don't have to have it real dominant. Okay, from there I'm going to start building trees. Now that I know where that line is, my trees will come down to that line. So I'm going to take sap green, some ultramarine blue, a little bit of Van Dyke brown, a little bit of white, not much. I want to keep this fairly dark. Green, blue, brown. And I'm going to dip into a little bit of this clear medium because that will make the paint release off the brush a little easier. And watch how I load this. I'm going to tap the brush like this. So it's really nice and loose and what I call exploded. It's pulled apart. If I come up here and just tap vertically, I can bring this down into trees. This dark in here just represents the shadows within the trees. So all I need to do is kind of bring this down in. I'll bring the trees down into this dark. And this will all just become trees. The key is in making sure it stays really dark. And see, basically all I'm doing is holding the brush vertically and I'm tapping. And this is something that you can do. It's not difficult at all. Look how good that looks. Minimal work. You're not drawing every little needle on every little tree. You don't have to. These are in the distance, so just that mere suggestion of it is enough. I'm going to bring this dark right down to where my water line was that I just established. And see, this is more or less kind of a silhouette scene. We got light behind it, so these can afford to be quite dark and stay that way. I do want some texture down in here, so it's just not solid black. So I'm going to bring that down in closer to my line. I can highlight a little bit here and there, but I don't want to get crazy with the highlights either. Like I said, sometimes less is more. Now if I were to take that color and add a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of the straight sap green, which is a little more vibrant than the stuff that I grayed down. And like I said, I don't want to get too crazy with the highlighting, but I'm loading the brush basically the same way. A lot of paint. I can just kind of put a few little highlights here and there. If I'm going to do that, I want it kind of towards the middle of the canvas. Notice how this light kind of draws your eye and it leads the viewer into the painting rather than if I put it all on the outside edge. So I just kind of drop a little bit in there and I work with it. Notice how I keep tap, tap, tapping. I'm melting it into that darker green that I laid underneath so it's not so harsh. I'm going to take a paper towel and wipe this off and to blend that even further I'm just going to keep doing that little tapping maneuver. What this does with the brush wiped off is I'm actually blending the lighter greens into the darker so everything's kind of soft, a little bit more out of focus like distant trees. I don't want it to read too close. Alright, that's pretty good for a backdrop don't you think? pretty easy. See how I utilized that black? The black takes care of all the shading in there, all the shadows. I'm going to rinse my brush out and my cleaner. And I'm going to wipe this off and I'm going to start basing in my water. Now, I don't want to start out with all my uh, lighter stuff first, so I'm going to actually put in the shadows for the water. I'm going to use blue and white with intentions of highlighting it with pure white later on. So I'm getting this quite blue because against that stark black it's going to look very light no matter what I do. So I'm going to go pretty blue like this. Notice how I'm chiseling the brush together this time. I'm not pouncing it open. I'm matting it together. And back here I'm just going to scuff in the indication 
Look how nice that blue reads against that black. Isn't that beautiful? Very shaded, shadowy. Notice my strokes are all horizontal. I'm painting water, so I want it to lay flat. Leave a little bit of the black showing through it. That's what gives it the depth. Notice how much that looks like water already. I really haven't done much to it. From there, I want to decide a waterfall. I'm going to have maybe two or three tricklers coming in. How far do I want them to dump down? And then I'm going to have a little reservoir at the bottom. So if I just lightly touch like this, just to give myself kind of a map, and I made a decision right there. I'm going to have it dump that far onto another pool of water. So once I know that, this time I am going to tap the brush same color. I am tapping the brush open so it's kind of loose. And if I just use a use the tips of the bristles and pull down, the water is going to come across and dump straight down. Gravity is going to make sure of that. So make sure you're not coming across at too much of an angle. And maybe we'll have another one over here somewhere dumping in this way. And if you want them wider, just don't make them all the same size. If you want one wider than the next, you just come in and widen it out a little bit. Overlap a stroke to it. It's important that you don't work it so much that you lose all the black. Notice the black striations in that are what make it actually look like it's moving water. This is only the shadow tone. Once we highlight this, it's going to be very dramatic. I hope you've enjoyed watching this series. We've been bringing you a lot of different subject matters. A lot of landscapes, but some floral. And we tried to mix it up, different scenes, different times of day, different colors, different tools. Painting is just a big pul pulpery of a lot of different things, so your ideas and the tools that you use to accomplish them. So I'm hoping you're enjoying this, and I hope you give it a try. Okay. That's about all I need to do for right now. Uh, we got a lot more to come into the foreground, but the background's pretty much sewn up. So we're going to take a short break for a few words, and we'll be right back with you and come back and see how we finish this up. If you enjoy fun and fast painting with Wilson Bickford and want to try these lessons at home, order the Fun and Fast Complete Painting Kit today. The set contains everything you need to get started on your masterpiece, including Wilson's signature oil paints, the complete brush and tool set, a table easel, and more. For special savings on Wilson Bickford's products, go to jerrysartorama.com forward slash WB. Act now and you'll also receive three free instructional DVDs starring the instructor himself. Order now from jerrysartorama.com. Welcome back. We're going to button up this waterfall scene. We've got the background in the sky, the middle ground in. We're coming up forward into the painting with the falls. This is going to be dumping into a pool of water down here. So I'm going to pick up where I left off and I'm just taking more of the same color, which was the blue and the white. I'm going to scuff this in. Again, notice my strokes are horizontal. If I come in and just go every which way, the water doesn't look like it's laying flat. So I'm using that black undercoat to my advantage. Notice how that black reads through there and it gives that water depth. So don't fill it in solidly. All right, that's looking pretty darn good already. I'm going to wash this brush out. I'm going to pick up some straight titanium white. This is where it's going to start really getting dramatic because of the black. We don't have anything really bright on this canvas yet against that black. The other extreme from black is white. I'm going to start putting that white in there and it's really going to make this pop. So I'm going to wipe this brush off. I've washed it and I'm wiping it off. I'm going to actually take this thick paint. 